I am a social psychologist specializing in studies of self-control. I have studied people's self-control for more than a decade and found our lives are full of failures in controlling our behaviors, thoughts, and emotions. We may sometimes eat or drink too much where we know we shouldn't. And other times we would procrastinate when we know that we have things we have to do. We may reveal our strong emotions, which may be a good thing sometimes, but other times so excessively that it may cause trouble in relationship with others. It seems that without exception, we all have issues of self-control. But hey, that's what makes us all human, don't you think? Humankind has been battling with this issue, lack of self-control. Even Aristotle, back in his days in ancient Greece, thoroughly discussed this lack of self-control and how pro problematic it can be in one of his books. Throughout the history of humankind, people have aspired to have better self-control and look for ways to discipline themselves. People have tried so many different strategies, some of which may seem more or less bizarre. Please take a look at this painting portraying a famous scene from Homer's epic poem, Odyssey. The main character of this story is Ulysses, the captain of the ship, standing on the left-hand side of this picture. This brave man wanted to hear the sirens sing. Sirens, depicted as beautiful women invading the ship, are the sea monsters known to seduce the, the sailors with their beautiful voice and then drag them into the sea. What did Ulysses do to control his actions in the face of great temptation by the sirens? As you can see in the picture, he ordered his men to tie him up to a mast and also gave them orders to block their own ears with earplugs so that they wouldn't throw themselves into the sea as the sirens seduced them. Yes, physically limiting your actions and senses can sometimes be a good solution and it can effectively stop you from doing something disastrous. However, you cannot possibly live a life like this, always having your hands tied or putting earplugs into your ears. So, how can we discipline our behaviors, thoughts, and emotions while maintaining a reasonably enjoyable and happy life? So, we come back to this original question, how can we improve our self-control? But, that is not the right question to ask. At least, not the first one to begin our quest with. Better to know your enemies before you face them. The first question we need to ask is, why do we fail in self-control? Once we have a better understanding of the reasons why we fail, it should naturally provide us with the key to be more successful. So, here's the question. Why do we fail in self-control? What would your answer be? To make it easier for you, I shall give you a list of alternatives to choose from. Please take a moment to look at this list and pick the ones that you think are critical to self-control. Abundance of temptations. Lack of commitment to important goals. Lack of awareness to inner conflicts. Difficulty in resolving inner conflicts. And lack of willpower to suppress impulse. If any of you thought that all of these factors looked plausible and found it hard to choose, you are actually quite right. 
Studies in psychology have shown that all of these factors can be detrimental to self-control. And a failure in self-control is often a result of multiple factors combined. And it is not very easy to designate which is to be the most critical. But that does not necessarily mean that there is no solution to it. Actually, psychologists have studied extensively on how to improve people's self-control, focusing on one of the factors in the list. Now, let me briefly introduce some of the effective strategies in regards to each factor. The first one is abundance of temptations. Yes, it is difficult to control our desires when you are surrounded by temptations. And a simple solution to this issue is to reduce the temptations from your surrounding environment. If you know that something can be a temptation for you, but you don't want to consume it anymore, such as a bag of potato chips, a can of beer, or a pack of cigarette, you name it, throw them all away into the bin and don't buy new ones. If you don't want to spend too much time on your smartphone, don't throw it away into the bin. But keep the phone, put away the phone into a drawer or someplace that you can't see it. I know what you're thinking. It's easier said than done, I know. But trust me, if you can do it, reducing the chances of perceiving those temptations is the ultimate prevention of self-control failure. The second one is lack of commitment to important goals. More often than you may think, our important goals may slip from your mind and we may end up regretting what we have done or haven't done. One of the effective way is to keep a reminder of your goal. Keep a small something that reminds you of the importance of your goal and make it frequently visible to yourself. An old-fashioned but classic item is a wedding ring. A married person would wear a wedding ring as a reminder of one's commitment to the partnership. A more modern way is to keep a reminder on your smartphone. For example, you can set an image on your smartphone wallpaper that reminds you of the things that you should be doing or should not be doing. You can even add a sentence to it like, more exercise, less screen time. The third one is lack of awareness to inner conflicts. Inner conflicts in a context of self-control involve mixed feelings, such as, I want to do this, but I shouldn't, or, I don't want to do this, but I have to. Oftentimes, we would overlook those inner conflicts by making excuses, like, it's not a big deal if I do it only once, or, no need to do it now, I can do it later. But you know what happens if we start making excuses like this. Yes, we'd, uh, we, we'd end up regretting it. This is a tricky one, really, because it is so easy to make those excuses to yourself. But there is a solution to it, too. Make it a habit to reflect on your behaviours. Try spending a few minutes before you fall asleep and think back on the, thing, on the things that you have done during the day. Isn't there anything that you might regret having done or not having done? Some people are reluctant to do this, to do this daily reflection, thinking that it's meaningless to look back on the past. Other people may find it too painful to do it. However, if you keep on doing this, you'll be surprised to learn that there are so many inner conflicts that you may have overlooked during the day. And the good news is 
that you always have tomorrow to make things better. In one of my research projects, I and my collaborators asked a group of university students to do this daily refre reflection for a period of one week. Every evening at 9 p.m., they would receive a lie message, a text message on your smartphone prompting them to reflect on their behavior during the day, especially on the ones that they might regret, and also to think about the ways to make it better the next time. The impact of this daily reflection was remarkable. Many of the students not only reported better insights about their inner conflicts, but also better confidence in self-control. Many of them realized the good change in themselves and also willing, uh, were willing to continue, to continue on doing this daily reflection, reflection even after the research period was over. And the next one is difficulty in resolving inner conflicts. Inner conflicts, as I explained earlier, involve mixed feelings. And sometimes it is difficult to resolve the inner conflicts and you may end up having trouble making up your mind. One of the effective ways to resolve the inner conflict is to set a reasonable reward for your better choices and actions. For example, if you would like to set your mind to go out jogging when you are tempted to just stay home and watch television. Set a, set a reasonable reward to motivate yourself to take the better action. For example, rewarding yourself with an hour of watching television after you have done enough jogging. Setting a reward for achievement is a good way to resolve the inner conflict and to motivate yourself to do something that you might hesitate to do otherwise. And the last one is lack of willpower to suppress impulse. Some people may think that willpower is something that you are born with and there's no way of changing it, but that is not true. Studies in psychology have shown that Willpower can be strengthened by training. It's just like training your muscles by lifting heavy weights. The more you use your willpower, the stronger it gets. My collaborator and I have te tested this theory by introducing a self-control exercise that can be easily incorporated into daily life. Make it a habit to act five minutes earlier we asked a group of university students to, uh, to act five minutes earlier whenever they had a chance to, which must have required exercise of self-control. And after a two-week period of this training, those students exhibited better capacity in inhibiting impulse, meaning that they, they, they have developed better, a better willpower. The content of this self-control training can be anything that requires a little bit of um, mental strength, such as practicing playing a musical instrument or squeezing a hand grip. By incorporating these little exercises of self-control can actually help you strengthen your willpower. So, as a summary, here are the five simple rules to improve your self-control. If you'd like to be more successful in controlling your behaviors, please incorporate these rules into your daily life. You don't have to try everything, though. Try one or two to begin with. Pick the one that you think that are most relevant to your own issues, or the ones you think you can easily implement the important thing is that whatever you do, keep on trying. The more you continue to try, it becomes easier to implement. 
which means that you form good habit to support your self-control in everyday life. Thank you.